Hello everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul. Today once again here in the studio we have none other than Leon Chen from Gigabyte. How's it going Leon? Good. We are fresh back from PAX East and though we are tired, we are nonetheless yeah. bringing you some information. Today's video is going to be all about uh, a, the uh, FM2 Plus platform from AMD and the Gigabyte motherboards that are supporting that. We're also going to talk a little, about, a little bit about the new AM1 uh, platform as well towards yes. the end of this video. So. If that's all you're here for, jump jump to the end. Um, but uh, let's talk first off about segmentation. We've got a wide variety of boards right here. Um, these are all sort of aimed at uh, different segments of the market and different uh, computer implementations. Would right, that be Paul. Accurate? So um, we do have, uh, I brought with me today uh, different form factors. We have our ATX form factors. Mm -hmm. We have our micro ATX as well as a mini ITX. And we do see markets trending in different directions depending on uh, what type of use of computing anyone does, mm -hmm. home computing to gaming. So in that sense, uh, these are the form factors. We also have different segmentations of these boards. For example, this green one, this green and black one, is our G1 Sniper A88X, mm -hmm. and this is our gaming board. And then I have an F2 A88X UP4, which is our performance board. Very nice. And in sense of the micro ATX and the mini ITX, these are just smaller factor, form factors for people who are more on the go, who actually need to be a little bit more mobile with their desktop system. Okay. But they still want that power that they see in a, uh, ATX form factors. And uh, these are all using the A88X chipset, if I'm not mistaken? Right. So it is the A88X chipset, and they support both the Trinity, Richland, and Kaviri APUs. Okay. And just a quick history lesson, if you guys haven't heard of APUs at all, you probably have by now if you watch our channel, but an APU is an accelerated processing unit which is made by AMD, which includes both a processor, a multi-core uh, processor, as well as a multi-core GPU, uh, all on the same chip. So you buy that, drop it into one of these boards, uh, and then you get not only the computing capabilities, but you also get graphics built in. Right. However, there are also expansion slots on these boards, so that's not necessarily to say that you have to use the integrated graphics on the APU. You can actually add a discrete graphics card as well and uh, increase your gaming performance if that's the type of system that you're going for. Yes, definitely. And that's something that uh, we at Gigabyte, we like to build on, you know. We know that you do have that graphics chip. Uh, and just so you guys all know, the, these graphics chips, they're able to support 4K natively from the HDMI output. Let me just pick this board up right here. Very nice. So we have an HDMI output, which can do 4K. It can also do triple monitor support. As you can see, we have the D-sub, we have the DVI, as well as the HDMI. And this is something that is very good for those users who want a surround atmosphere for gaming, mm -hmm. who want to have multiple screens to use when they're doing spreadsheets, you know, things like this. So not just necessarily gaming systems, but also having the multi-monitor multi support, excellent for productivity, right. uh, and multiple screens. Um, any business person will tell you there have been lots of studies done on that. And having multiple monitors is great for productivity if you're doing work in the workplace or at home or any type of situation yes. like that. So um, the full-size ATX boards over there obviously have much more expandability and are probably going to be uh, maybe a little bit more popular for the gaming side, of course, particularly the G1 Sniper. Smaller form factors here, though, maybe a, a variety of uses because we'll see business machines made with smaller Commercial. form factors, but also mini ITX uh, becoming way, extremely popular in the gaming community for people want to build small on-the-go systems that they take to um, land parties, land parties or, or take along with you to PAX events, East or, right. or something like that. Right, something Excellent. to show off. Uh, speaking about graphics though, Paul, uh, we did want to talk about this a little bit more. Uh, just so you guys see, we have a dual graphics listed right here. Mm -hmm. And this isn't reference to the multiple PCI slots in order for us to do a two-way uh, crossfire. Okay. This is actually graphics where we use the onboard as well as a discrete card together. So you're combining the GPU and the APU with a discrete graphics card, kind of uh, teaming them up together to give you sort of a similar performance boost as you might get with a Crossfire or an SLI right. configuration, um, but not necessarily exactly the same thing, so just to make that yes. distinction. But it, it's also dependent on the processor you're using. So mm -hmm. if you're using an FM2, you want to be looking at a 6000 series. Okay. If you're using an FM2+, Plus, you're probably looking around an R7. Okay. So I mean, definitely check in the manual, check online to see which products are compatible with your product that you've purchased. And I believe uh, on the AMD website, they have an AMD uh, APU support list that will list all of the dual graphics capable APUs as well as the dual graphics GPUs that you can combine together. And then, of course, if you're looking to go even beyond that uh, performance, since there is a slightly more limited number of, of, of graphics cards that you can set up dual graphics with, you're, of course, totally free to drop in a 
more powerful discrete graphics card uh, to go for more gaming performance and not necessarily use the dual graphics, but um, the higher end graphics card might give you even more performance. Right, okay. definitely. So um, beyond that, uh, again, all these form factors that we have here, and um, let's see, we talked about 4K, we talked about the graphics capabilities. Um, what types of systems do you think are, are best suited for these? What, where do you see these particular motherboards kind of going down the line being used as far as uh, systems people would build for uh, home or office use? Well, definitely, like we talked about before, we have multiple segments. We have a lot of FM2 Plus motherboards. Mm -hmm. You can check on Newegg. We have the full lineup like I brought here, different form factors, different segments. There, Gigabyte definitely makes one that people are looking for. Mm -hmm. For audio enthusiasts, this board seconds for audio enthusiasts as well. We're using Nichicon audio capacitors. Uh, we also have a DAC, USB DAC, that can actually disable the power. Okay. So you're getting full data versus That's getting powered. A little chip right there. We I'm have an op amp on it as well from what for you viewers to see right here. This little chip is an op amp, so it's an operational amplifier that actually amplifies the audio that you get out of your line out. Uh, sorry, your speaker output. Okay. We also have next to the op amp, you see these are gain switches. Okay. So the two gain switches for the different channel left and right. And you can also see we have additional unique features with the gold plating. Uh, you can find a lot of these features in various build, uh, even build or product videos that we've done here at Newegg mm -hmm. if you want more reference to what we have here. And then uh, I, I wanted to take another really quick look here at the mini, uh, mini ITX version here because uh, I know when this platform first launched, that's what I heard a lot of requests for were small form factor uh, solutions for that. So here you can see you guys have packed a ton of hardware into a very, very small, just about seven inches by seven inches space. Uh, but you still have the full functionality that you would have with any desktop system. So you have your APU uh, socket right there, of course, a couple DIMM slots so you can take advantage of the dual channel memory. You still have uh, four SATA ports. You have a full complement of I.O. on the back as well, including integrated Wi-Fi. So yep. um, you don't necessarily need to use your expansion slot if you need wi a Wi-Fi Wi-Fi and card. Bluetooth. And Bluetooth. We yes. can't forget the Bluetooth as well, uh, as well as heat sinks on there. So of course, there are lots of APUs that also have overclocking capabilities. I'm not going to talk about that too much today, but uh, for those of you enthusiasts out there who like to try to push your hardware a little bit farther, farther these boards are all going to be able to do that. Yes, Excellent. definitely. All right, so um, that's a, a, a little bit of a, an overview for you guys uh, about the uh, FM2 Plus socket, uh, again, for uh, the Kaveri as well as the uh, Richland or Trinity APUs, if you've got any of those still uh, around. But let's transition now, if we will, All right. over to a new platform that just launched. So this is uh, AM1, and we've got the hidden right. motherboard back there that we wanted to show you guys. Now, um, Let's talk about uh, uh, market sector for AM1 because this is not necessarily a new motherboard in that is here is a super powerful new, uh, new uh, platform that we've launched. This is actually going for a, a market segment that um, maybe is a little bit more towards the budget end, but it's much more accessible. Um, and actually, uh, I was reading a little bit of the AMD materials that they originally talked about with AM1, and this was designed for, uh, particularly for segments of the world that uh, have lower GDP, where people need uh, an integrated solution that's x86, that has multiple operating system support, but a much lower price point, so a much lower, lower point of entry. Um, but um, that's kind of a brief overview of AM1 and, and what AMD was going for with that. Um, but let's talk about more specifically about this board here, the AM1M-S2H. Have you guys done anything specific with, specific with this board to uh, differentiate it from the others? Well, definitely. We always add gigabyte unique features on all of our motherboards. So you can see that we do have the ultra durable on it. Mm -hmm. We have ultra cool, ultra performance. Uh, like you said, Paul, this is a budget board. But on top of that, we've added other features that users will use. Okay. So with the AM1 platform, what you're getting from your APU or your processing unit, uh, it, it actually is an SOC. So it's a soldered on chip, which means we no longer have a chipset on mm -hmm. the board, like what you see with the other boards we have here. So in that sense, it means that whenever you switch that, that processor out, mm -hmm. your time or your BIOS is no, uh, the time for your system is no longer recorded. Okay, so that's an element of a desktop board that you don't often consider because most desktop boards have a chipset. Right. But now it's part of that APU. It's part of the APU now. So before with the battery, the, the chips, uh, your date and time would be stored on your chipset. Okay. The battery would power that chipset. It would be able to count 
how many seconds go by, how many minutes, how many hours go by. Mm -hmm. But with the APU, let's say you want to do an upgrade. You switch out that processing unit, it no longer has that date and time there. So what we've done is we've actually included in what we like to call an RTCIC. Now okay. this is a real-time counter, uh, real-time real -time counter, which allows us to actually keep the time that you have set in your system on record. Okay, so, so you wouldn't necessarily have that experience where suddenly you've right. you've lost the date and time on your system. I find that uh, the time when I realize that that's happened with any system I've had, if you, like if you have a battery go dead on a motherboard or something, you're trying to access a website and suddenly it's telling you all of your certificates have expired and you're like, what's going on? It's like, oh, my clock is set to 2001 or something right. like that. So, and you'll uh, also witness it with some applications, even some operating systems where mm -hmm. they won't let you boot because of that issue. So every time you do that, you might have to jump back into your BIOS, reset the time again. But with this board, you actually don't have to do that. Right now, this board is, we're looking about $35 MSRP wow. on Newegg with some promotional offers on it, so definitely check back. Excellent, so um, as far as uh, folks in, in our market segment, since we primarily sell to US and Canada at this point, although we are expanding, um, where would you see these types of boards being used? Uh, smaller systems, low power systems? Small systems, low powered systems, but you have to also look at it in this sense. It's a great small workstation. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a home desktop replacement for, you know, uh, casual users. Okay. You know, it's good for the kids to type if they want to do any word processing. It's good for, you know, website browsing. Anything like that, this is a great budget system for you to build. Excellent. I could also see a HTPC implementation, right. something along those lines, a small home server that you want to address. Because uh, if I'm not mistaken, and, and I could be wrong about this because I'm pulling it out of my head, I believe the TDP on the chips is something like 25 watts? It's very low. It's, it's very low, so these, these systems really sip power. So if you're looking for a home server that you want to keep on all the time, um, but save a lot of juice, and not really crank up your uh, your energy bill, an excellent solution for that as well. Right, definitely. All right, so that is uh, the AM1M-S2H uh, from Gigabyte. This will be available, of course, on Newegg.com, so we'll post links in this video's description. Uh, an exciting uh, new platform, especially for folks looking to put together a simple system to use at home. It's going to be budget-friendly, and, and then again, the, the power savings is an excellent feature yes. as well. And then, of course, you're going to get all the uh, all the Gigabyte features here, uh, such as, as you mentioned, the ultra-durable ultra -durable. construction, so you're going to make sure that board has a long lifespan. And uh, I think that about wraps it up. Any, any final words for us, Leon? No, thank you for having us again, and we hope to be here next time to show you guys more cool things. Definitely. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you. And uh, thanks to all you guys at home for watching today's video. Of course, if you'd like to see more, don't forget to subscribe to our New Egg TV YouTube channel. Leave us a comment or some feedback in the feedback section down below, as well as a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And we'll see you all next time.